Hello, today I want to improve the understanding of how real power flows in a power grid and how to control it. Here is a typical example of a small power grid with five generators, reactive power compensation, loads, power lines, substation, breakers and so on. Here is an example of how it looks like when we run such a small power flow simulation. It is very interactive. Here we start the simulation and you can see how you can adapt the phase angle and the power supply to the system from the various generators which are connected to the system. I can simulate what happens if I open or close a breaker somewhere in the system. And so I get a very good understanding of how a power system works. Here is the same example, but this time with an entirely green grid. So I have a pump storage on top and then I have uh, four intermittent generators, for example, wind generators with uh, green arrows. You could run the same simulation with three phases, but it would then be less uh, responsive because of more elements to be calculated. To better understand load flow or power flow calculation, let's talk about some generic principles to start with. Here is a synchronous generator with a permanent magnet rotating in the rotor. The resulting rotating magnetic field induces a voltage in the three coils of the stator. Next, I connect two synchronous generators to each other. The generator to the right did not yet get a rotor yet. Thus, the three-phase voltage induced by the fully equipped rotor to the left induces a rotating magnetic field in the stator of the generator on the right side. The magnetic field to the right is 180 degrees phase shifted compared to the source magnet to the left. The red curve shows that there is reactive power flowing from generator A to generator B. For simplification reasons, here I show only one of the three phases. At the very moment when both generators are equipped with the same magnetic rotor and both rotors rotate in perfect sync, no phase angle between them, the generators are perfectly balanced, both produce the exact same phase voltages, there is no current flowing between them and thus no reactive or active power exchange. Larger synchronous generators do not have a permanent magnet in the rotor, but a DC coil powered by a DC source. The result is a rotating magnetic field as well, but controllable. Look at the blue rotating arrow. The AC output voltage is a function of the excitation DC current in the rotor. If the rotating DC field in one of the two generators increases, the induced voltage in one generator will increase as well and thus create an imbalance between the two generators. For compensation of this imbalance, a current flows between the two generators leading to a reactive power exchange, as demonstrated by the red curve. Watch the increasing left blue arrow and in both generators the red compensation arrow, the compensation field produced by the green compensation current. Now, for the first time, we build up an angle between both rotors. And guess what? We get real power flowing from the left generator to the right generator. If the right generator angle lags, it acts as a motor. In order to make the point, I filtered out the rotation so you can see the growing rotor angle in slow motion. Enjoy this one. So far, we look at one phase only. If, however, I sum up the real power of all three phases, I get a nice sinus curve. And this is the reason why the real power is a sinus function of the rotor angle. At the end, both components, the real power and the reactive power, are affected by the rotor angle. This was a tough one, right? As a mnemonic, keep this one. Real power when there is a torque between the two magnets. If you just increase one of the two magnets without increasing an angle, you just get reactive power. Short summary, in order to produce real power, you need a rotor angle. In order to get the rotor angle, you need a torque. And the torque is established by means of a turbine. 
Let's verify the torque. Here I have two generators. Each one of them has a synchronous reactants. The parameters of the generators are defined as follows. It shall be a 24 kV generator, 300 MVA, with a TDC time constant of 50 milliseconds and a synchronous reactance of 1.2 per unit. What you get as a result, you see it there, and we will now implement these results into our simulator. The voltage source part of the 24 kV generator has a peak phase to ground voltage of 19.5 kV. I entered the results of my calculations for the two synchronous reactances of the generators. To begin with, we said that the generator on the right side has no magnetic field in the rotor, thus the induced voltage is zero. Let's now run the simulation. I put my model to the left side and I run. I want to synchronize it with 50 Hz. I want to go for 40 milliseconds runtime. These are just the first 40 milliseconds. I want to have a continuous calculation, therefore this yellow button there. The red tray stands for power, it's reactive power. Blue is voltage, green is current. If, however, the three phase voltages of the two generators are equal, logically no current flows and as a result there is no power flow. So no green current trace and no red power trace. If, however, I increase the voltage of the generator to the left, then there is an imbalance, current flows and reactive power flows. If, however, I increase the rotor angle between the two generators, I get the real power exchange, one gen being the generator, the other one the motor. This is exactly what we learned minutes ago. So far, we have been working with voltage sources and rotor angles only. There is still one tick missing the mechanical torque and the resulting acceleration of the rotation frequency. The frequency is a key parameter for the stability of a power grid. A surplus in power generation accelerates the rotation frequency of all connected synchronous generators and vice versa. If the frequency exceeds exceed 50 or 60 Hz, the torque on generators is automatically reduced or increased in case of under frequency. This mechanical response can be included by ticking the generator box in every generator input form. To get a bit of automatic speed control, tick the droop box as well. With the shifter on the left, you do not anymore control the rotor angle, but the power of the generator, the real power. The shifter to the right controls the voltage of the generator. In a power flow analysis, I would normally set one of the generators as a so-called infinite bus. This is a pure stiff voltage source without any inner impedance and with fixed frequency. This infinite bus would swallow all real power or reactive power imbalance and so the rest of the system can be analyzed and optimized properly. The generator with variable frequency to the left can now act either as a generator, like now, or as a motor, like now. But the frequency in this case would always stay stable at 50 or 60 Hz. We have now all the ingredients to manage our first very small power flow model. I have now added a three-phase power line between our infinite bus and our generator to the left. I get a warning that the line is too short for the number of uh, simulation steps I had before. This number in the middle of the line should be at least two. Therefore, I have to increase the number of steps. Now you can see the power flow direction in this line. Now I generate power which goes from the left to the right. So my various frequency generator acts as generator. And now I want to have it acting as a motor, therefore I will suck power from the infinite bus through the line through the to the motor. And you see how the direction of the real power in the line is changing. I want to see the total power delivered to the system and not the power of the three-phased individual, therefore I tick the G-box there and then I really see the total power of the generator delivered to the system as a straight line. 
The blue curves represent the voltages on, of the infinite bus to the right and of the generator to the left. You can see that the power, the red curve, is a function of the angle between these two voltages. The maximum power is delivered when the angle is 90 degrees. And if we, if we exceed now 90 degrees, we will lose system stability. The generator will just run away. This is what happens now. This is what should never happen in a power system. Let's move to the phaser app now. Let's go to 50 Hertz. And now we see the individual phasers of all three phases. Now let's vary the angle. And you see how the red line, the power varies in function of the angle. North and south is reactive power, east and west is real power. In case of a balanced three phase system, it is convenient to use a single phase model instead of a three phase model. You get the same results and it's much more efficient as we can see right now. So here is a generation, then we have a motor, and we can also say, show how what happens if we exceed the 90 degrees, exactly the same as before with the three-phase system. We are now just about to lose stability. And of course, we can also look at the phase chart. So we get the same results as before, but it's simpler, it's clearer, and faster. In reality, you would never transmit power of a 300 MVA generator on a 25 kV line. For comparison, I put exactly the same system in place, but on 250 kV. On the 25 kV system, I lose stability already at 80 MW real power transmission because the phase angle re uh, reaches 90 degrees. On the 250 kV system, I reach stability limit only at 220 megawatt real power transmission. I can even further improve that if I reduce a little bit XD or the impedance of the power generator to the left. Here you can access the simulation tool. The link is in the command line under the movie. I have set up a small grid with only one infinite bus, one may also call it slag bus, as a 240 kV power source. There are two 200 km and 250 km transmission lines. Let's run it. We do not see the power values on the elements as we may like to see it. We just see the element traces on the screen. In order to get these values, we need at least one of the sources being set as a generator. To imitate the slack bus performance, I entered a very high power value. You can observe that if one of the lines is taken out, for example due to a lightning strike, it has a huge impact on the voltages at all the loads. Thus, the voltage stability of this system would immediately collapse. Therefore, let's add redundancies at least on two of the lines and see if the situation has improved. Observe the voltage traces. If I lose one of the lines now, you see that the impact on the voltage is never anymore as bad as before. If I lose a part of the load, I get slight overvoltages. This is due to the capacitive characteristics of the connected power lines. The voltage stability band is very narrow, therefore a reactive power compensation is needed. 
The reactor compensates the capacitive currents of the power lines. And as you can see, the situation has already greatly improved. In reality, I would have to optimize the compensation of all the nodes. I have now added a second power generation source. It is a 300 megawatt real power source. I start now to gradually increase the real power delivered by this additional second power source. Gradually from zero towards around about 220 megawatt. And you can see how the power flow, the real power flow, the real power flow through all the transmission lines adapts to these new circumstances. Watch also how the power flow changes if I have a load shedding in one of the nodes of the network. If the phase angle of the generator crosses 90 degrees, there is a classical runaway of the generator. As usual, I can go and visit the phaser app to watch what happens at the phases when I have some changes in the network, such as opening or closing breakers, adding power. So I can really watch uh, what happens to the phase angles. I can watch what happens to the length of the phasers and so on. So it's very educative. With ECSP, you can easily and effectively increase your credible competence in power system topics such as power flow, short circuits, over voltage, reactive power compensation, even HVDC, and so on. I would be glad to see you there again on www.ecsp.ch. Bye bye.